Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we have the Hibby M300. This is an Android MP3 player, and it is quite nice for the price. It's actually very well constructed, and I thought that it will be a great addition as a companion device to many of you. So let's get over it, let's get an overview of what it is, and see if this is a device that you can use in conjunction with your dumb phone. So as we know, a lot of dumb phones like the Lightphone 2 or other devices may not have all of the capabilities, so sometimes we need companion devices. This is an Android 13 device, and I really like that it does have a very good processor as well. So it has a Snapdragon 665. It has a 2000 milliamp hour battery. It does have 32 gigs of memory, but it also has an SD card expansion up to 128, if I check correctly. Uh, that's has 3 gigs of RAM, and the resolution is not amazing, but that's okay because this is most likely a streaming device or a pocketable device that you can download music to. I personally like the form factor of the device. It's quite small compared to a Jelly 2. It's just a little bit larger, but you can install pretty much any app that you want, like on the Play Store, and you use it on Wi-Fi. So if you want WhatsApp or your messaging apps, you want to take them with you, you tether from your dumb phone or you find Wi-Fi and all of a sudden you have a win-win. You have a companion device that handles all of the smart things that you need to do and it's pretty capable. And then you have your dumb phone for regular communication. As you see, I have loaded certain applications and I have uninstalled other ones. So here is AntennaPod for podcast. That's one example. New pipe for videos if you want to download them. And there you go. That's pretty much it. And then I also loaded MStream, which allows you to listen to music, and it eventually downloads it for you on an offline folder. So that's super nice. On top of that, it does have a regular MP3 app from them, from the Hibby company. And this one will scan your music and catalog it. You can create playlists and albums and you know different functionality. It's actually quite nice. It does have a calendar. And it does have uh, settings in the Play Store. You can disable the Play Store. It's not necessary for you to have it. Um, but it does have files, calculator, calendar. It brings a browser ca called VIA, V-I-A. And I don't recommend using that. So if you're going to use a browser on this device, I recommend that you load one from a different source. I just used it to download my Droidify right here so that I could actually download all of the other apps that are open source. That's just my personal preference. I and I did try the Aurora store, which also works if you want to download other Google Play applications, but without using Google Play. I just wanted to showcase that it comes with the Play Store, but now I will disable it because I don't like using the Play Store personally. So you can load all of the different applications that you have. And I think it's a very good use case because you maintain a lot of the smart applications here. Now I'll showcase maybe, you know, you can download WhatsApp or Telegram or, you know, a lot of those apps that are really helpful for your everyday living, but they're relegated to a Wi-Fi only connection. Uh, you can install them and you can actually use them, but you are not going to be distracted by them with all of the notifications since this device will not be accessing the Wi-Fi connection. I mean, I'm sorry, the data connection is only on a Wi-Fi connection. So as you see right there, you can install other apps, whatever it is that you need to factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the reason why I like this device is because it does have all of these applications, but it does so at a very affordable price. I got this device for $169. So if you get a dumb phone for $50 or maybe $100, and then you get this device for $160 or on sale, um, then I think it's a good deal because you're getting a good package. The distractions, you contain them to a no data device, only Wi-Fi, and then you have communication for everything else. It does have very nice tactile buttons. So you have the power button here, you have the volume rockers, and you have skip tracks. So if you want to skip or maybe advance your podcast, uh, you can also lock them so that they're not usable, uh, only the top. But if you want to lock right there, it's not going up or down on the volume. But if I unlock it, now I have access to it so that you don't you know, mistakenly interact with them. Uh, besides that, it does not have a camera, which is a little bit of a downside. That's the other kind of like idea right here. So if you want something smaller and escapable as a companion device to your dumb phone journey, maybe the Jelly Star or maybe the Jelly Star can be your full device. So it's kind of like an alternative. But if you're looking for an affordable or more affordable than the Sony $350 AW105, I believe that's the name. If you are looking for great uh, compatibility with 
uh, DAC or DAX, you know, as they call it for high fi audio, high fidelity audio, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB C, great speaker. Then I think this device has a very good chance of being a great companion device. The battery life uh, has not disappointed so far. Uh, if you keep it especially under, you know, lower brightness conditions, it does great because it, since it doesn't have data, it doesn't, it's only using the Android operating system. It's going to last probably somewhere between a week to two weeks. Uh, if you're using it a lot, you know, it's going to definitely be a more four, four to five day uh, usage. But I really enjoyed using this device for the last few days. And I personally like that it does have a lot of compatibility with apps that you can bring them, but because of the no data, it's not going to have those notifications. Um, as always, I like to do a Q&A for you know, your frequently asked questions. So they're right there. I put them a little bit later today because I was trying to explain the purpose of the device first. If you have any questions about this device or any of the other devices that I have reviewed, make sure to put them in the comments below and I'll be interacting with you guys. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you to find some other alternatives to your digital minimalist lifestyle. Thank you and see you in the next video.